Hello everyone and welcome to today's live demonstration of how I fully stretch my entire body from head to toe on a rebounder. So on this YouTube channel, we've got lots of routines available. For those of you watching live, I haven't gone live tomorrow to launch the full body deep stretching routines. But for those of you who are not live with me, I have the links in the description for the full hour long, all levels deep stretch routine and the beginner version, which is 30 minutes of a deep stretch routine. So thank you for being here. If you're live, I have the comments disabled. Please leave your questions and comments in the comment section of YouTube if you have any questions and I'd be happy to get back to those with my text, okay? So I'm gonna get started by stepping onto my cellar sizer. That is the rebounder that I'm jumping on right now. And it is the rebounder that I prefer in order to access the G-force, the down balance. It's a firmer bounce than some of the other rebounders available on the market, like the bungee units. So this is a firmer bounce, which helps me to connect more to a, a firmer flush and ultimately to help create stronger uh, resilience, more resilience and stronger joints, tendons, ligaments, cells, and muscles is what I have discovered from jumping on this. Cause I do have a bungee unit and I noticed there's just not as much of a G force going down into gravity, which I think absolutely contributes to muscle density. So first off, I want to share my thoughts on the health bounce. Cause that's what we're going to be doing. That's the primary foundation of all the stretching of all the strengthening that we do on a rebounder is the health bounce. And there is a way to do it right, but we also need to know that when we first get on a rebounder, we might not be as comfortable and not be bouncing as fluidly as we will with more practice. So the more practice, the better, but this is how we do it. There's a very low bounce, which is, you know, on one spectrum of the health bounce. And then there's a higher bounce. The higher bounce would have the heels coming off the mat, but would have the top half of the foot still pushed against the mat. We could ultimately lift the feet off the mat. That is an option for bouncing. And ultimately I could do this for a health bounce, but there's not really any need to do that because we don't need to increase the G-force when we are especially beginning to lengthen and stretch out our bodies and adapt to jumping on a rebounder because this is a very, very, very unique and um, powerful form of exercise and fitness, especially if we are using the mat of a cellar size or rebounder. And so the adaptation journey and process requires that we adapt to the up and down motion and that we lengthen and uh, stretch the joints and the tendons and the cells and the ligaments and the muscles in this up and down motion. We're also going to be leaning and le stretching out the limbs. And a lot of it's going to be more of um, quicker movements compared to, um, you know, slower stretching like yoga or, um, you know, lifting. If we were to do stretching while lifting weights, for instance, it's going to be, you know, less reps, you know, more weight. So this is considered a higher rep, lower weight activity, which is great because we get not just dozens of reps, but hundreds of reps, which proves to be very, very powerful at building quick muscle density, especially um, helping to get us adapted and get us really strong in the joints, in all the joints. So when I first started jumping, I did have a, um, soreness and pain in all of my joints. And I was not someone who was struggling with joint pain. It just happened to be that I was not as strong as I thought I was coming from doing a bit of cycling. I did not come from going to the gym regularly. I was just doing cycling and maybe outdoor walking. And then maybe a decade before that, I was maybe dabbling in the gym a little bit, but it was, and, and doing mostly outdoor running. So I was never in the gym. I came to jumping instead in 2016 and I had ankle pain, calf pain, knee pain, wrist pain, elbow pain. And it wasn't like it all came out at once. It started happening over the first couple weeks. And so I know that with anybody that's jumping instead and maybe 
invests in a seller size or rebounder, which is an amazing investment. It takes time to adapt. So we always um, recommend that you spend about a month or two doing something like this, stretching on the rebounder while we're gently health bouncing. So let's get back to the health bouncing. The low health bounce is going to feel like the feet are flat and we're pushing into the top half of the foot and there is a little bit of a circular motion. It's not a conscious, you know, I'm focused on it. It just happens to be the reality. It's a little bit of a circular motion. And so we are pushing into that pad of the foot on both, on both feet simultaneously, perfectly evenly, making sure that our weight is balanced. We love the handlebar, we use it every single day. And this would be the low bounce where the feet are flat on the mat and we're just pumping and we're gently feeling that lift and resistance, that release resistance pump. And it just becomes very natural. We notice that the heels are sinking into the mat and we're put, so we're pushing into the pad of the foot and the heels are sinking and it's that beautiful back and forth. And then we can go up to a calf pump, which would be kind of the high range of the health bounce, the, high, uh, the higher resistance health bounce, the more strengthening health bounce where the heels are pumping off the mat. And so we're kind of balancing into the pads or the balls of the feet. We're balancing in there by, and holding onto the bar. And we just notice that we're lightly pumping the heels. It's not like a deep pump. The knees aren't bending. It's more so the feet are, the legs are just naturally standing tall without locking it. It's not locked. It's just, you know, loosely straight, gently, gently bent. And the heels are just coming off or they're staying connected to the mat. Either way, I think that throughout our routines, we do it all. We do, you know, and we do throughout the week or month, we do different variations of health bounce and it doesn't matter. It's, you know, what we wanna do, we'll get to know what we need to do in each moment and we should just do what we wanna do or our bodies just naturally gravitate towards. So let's start with teaching ourselves how to lengthen and strengthen our joints and, and lower back and our hips and our neck and our chest. We wanna lengthen and strengthen it all. It's starting with stretching on a seller size or, this, or a rebounder. This is the perfect way to adapt to jumping instead. So let's start with health bounce. And I like to start with a spine stretch. So let's say I were being measured against the wall and I wanted to put it, you know, give myself a little extra inch if I could, right? I really wanna maximize that lift of my spine. That's what I should do when we first start the stretch session. We want to really emphasize that lift coming from the neck and push that chin up just naturally by pulling the shoulders down. It's just a nice stretch upward in the spine and noticing that the heels could be bobbing off the mat or not. It doesn't matter so long as the feet are in a are in a position on the mat compared to you know where your handlebar is so you can just be balanced and feeling good and feeling like your feet are sinking comfortably and efficiently into the mat while lifting straight up and down so bringing the shoulders down that can be something you think of or not it doesn't have to happen but you just want to lift your head up like this so we start stretching by lifting the spine and that is always a great way to get that circulation going through the core, start to pump, get that blood and, and fluid shifting and getting that, more, that flexibility in the spine and the hips, waking up the body like this. And then I love to go into what I call the boogie. So maybe I'll open my feet into a wider stance. And you don't have to remember these little details because throughout the routines, you'll see me doing the instruction, but um, if you were to be doing this on your own. So there are a couple ways that we can do boogie, and I wanna show you that I'm pulling the shoulder up out of the hip on the same side that I'm pushing down into the mat. So this is a great way to loosen up the waist and the lower back and the hips. Now the variations of this move are endless. We could be leaning back and as always holding the bar for stability. My heels are coming off the mat one at a time. 
and I want to rock those shoulders and the hips as much as I can and feel into it. I'm feeling into the stretch. I'm actively stretching. So then we can lean forward and we might want to tuck our tummy in when we're leaning forward and notice that we are going more so into those obliques and connecting with the hips and the hip flexors and the, uh, the entire lower back. And then we can also be um, facing one direction as we are rocking those shoulders and rocking side to side. We can face the, the side, we can lean forward to the side, we can lean back to the side, we can go to the other side, lean forward and lean back. And there's another version of the boogie where it, I, we call it Southie and we wanna reach down. So the shoulder comes down into the down bounce, right? So there's that. So we can still be rocking the hips, we can still be rocking the shoulders and you'll notice that Again, we are opening up, lengthening, and strengthening the hips, the waist, the lower back, and the core. So again, leaning forward, leaning back, to the sides. So there's two ways of doing the boogie, and there's maybe even more ways of doing the boogie. So now we like to go into golf twist. So again, lifting up the spine, and then we can twist the upper body. We can just, you know, do a couple mid bounces in between if we want to. This makes us feel more comfortable. We could have one hand on the bar if we want to keep our balance in check. If for any reason, you know, we're still strengthening our balancing mechanisms. This is still so beautiful and so powerful. This opens up the chest muscle and this definitely strengthens and loosens up the mid back. And now we can just do a lower body twisting. So we keep the shoulders forward and we don't have to do the two mid bounces in between. We can just do it one, one mid bounce, or we could do no mid bounce. So essentially we're starting with the spine and then we're going to open up the core and then we're going to do a little bit of arm lengthening and then we're going to um, lengthen the legs. Then we're going to do our official arm lengthening and then we're going to do a little bit of the backs of the legs and glutes to finish it out and then we're going to do some tongue and eye stretching. And what I want to tell you too is that with stretching just if you were on the floor sitting on your butt and you had your legs beneath you like this and you lean forward and you go forward into that stretch you want to feel that tight, you know, you want to feel that tightness. You want to go into your tightness. And that is essentially the foundation of stretching on a rebounder is that you are accessing your tightness. And there is, it's, it's limitless how you can open up your tightness on a seller sizer or on any rebounder. And that's the goal here. So you could be following our, our uh, routines or you can be on your own just saying, I need to go into my tightness. And it, it's essentially never ending. So that's just one way to look at it. So let's continue with the upper body stretching. Next, we do a cat cow or a spine stretching exercise. So I like to face the side because I'm demonstrating, but we can face forward and we can bring our, our back into that arced position. So I like to bring the shoulders and the hips and the chin forward simultaneously all at the same time and like I said holding the bar that's always a, the better option the best option so what's great about this position is that we are lengthening the chin forward and that's really giving us a nice steep stretch in our upper neck and then the back the lats are opening up the ribs we're pushing those shoulders forward and then we have the hips forward as well which is opening up and loosening up the lower back and when we get into these positions of the cat cow, we really want to feel ourselves going into that feeling of the stretch. We don't want to just go through the motions and be like dancing. We kind of want to get into a deeper stretch and progress ourselves with our flexibility. And that's how one day we wake up going, I am the most limber I've ever been. And that's because I paid close attention to the stretching part of my fitness journey on a rebounder. So 
shoulders, hips, and chin forward at the same time. And then we bring the chin back, tuck it nice and tight in, shoulders and hips back. And we are applying all these stretching on this beautiful up and down bounce, accessing a deeper stretch because of the mat, because of the mat's flexibility, because the mat has a depth that we are accessing and it's bringing us up into this release, resistance, release. So we're applying resistance and we're applying, we have a depth going, you know, a depth opportunity and we're going deeper into the stretch. That's why stretching on a rebounder is ultimately superior to stretching on the floor if we know what we're doing. So that's cat cow. And then we go into, and you can do it this in any order you want to. So we can do the next, ne the next stretching next. So I like to start with my feet in a wide stance. Again, health pumping, we can more so focus on a low bounce when we open up the neck. Starting with, like I said, any, any variation of the neck stretch we want, but we want to open up the tightness and we want to access it. We don't want to just put our head down and, oh, okay, I don't really feel a stretch. We want to put our head down and find the stretch, find that feeling. So we tuck our chin in a little bit more. We really want to feel that out and find that stretch. And then we want to rotate our head very, very slowly and notice that there is a very, there, there's a position in every single angle of the stretch that you are connecting to the bounce. And so we want to move slowly. We don't want to move at you know, a snail's pace, but we want to move, well, maybe when we're stretching, but we just, we notice that we want to pay attention to maybe one or two bounces in each of the, the positions. And then when we're doing our, so we start with the chin and then we can go ear to shoulder Feel that nice stretch. We can, you know, shift the head any way we want to. And then when we do uh, a nice chin reach, this is really good for stretching out the jaw and lengthening the face. And as we like to say, what gets longer gets smaller. And so when we lengthen the whole body and when we lengthen the face, it, it, there's a slimmer look that appears that all of a sudden it's like we become longer, we get better circulation and we ultimately help the body, assist the body to, to turn into that lengthened body, that turn into that lengthened position that we get ourselves into repeatedly over and over again, at least once a week, if not once every two weeks, we want to do this lengthening routine. So stretching out the face and neck, this is a good one. We can look down at our shoulder. We can look behind our shoulder. There is just, the sky is the limit. Anything you want to do for all the head and neck stretches as we're just gently bouncing on the rebounder and holding the bar, always holding the bar. Next up, let's go into the sides of the waist. So I like to lean into the standing leg here as I take this arm and I reach it around and up and over and go into a ballet pose, making sure that this shoulder stays back and I'm focusing on my weight, pretty much going into this leg with this foot supporting my weight, holding the bar and I can go as far as I want to and I wanna feel the down bounce into the hip. Keeping the shoulder back is always a good idea. And of course, there's so many variations of this move. We can hold the bar, we can lean backwards more so. We could put our arms straight behind us. We could lean over a lot more if we wanted to. We could lean forward. And what we wanna do is access that beautiful feeling of lengthening, of stretching, just like they would be in ballet where we're lengthening and then applying it to that gentle down bounce to get us a little bit deeper into the stretch. So we can do that on both sides. We can go into the side of the body that stretches out the lats, the waist, the core, and we can lean in any position we want to. While this is very, very, very strengthening to the lower back as, as well, because the more we lengthen the joints, the stronger they become. The, we will potentially access some, some weaknesses throughout our stretching, throughout our strengthening. 
journey on the rebounder. We will access the, the weaknesses and we will take rest when we need to. It doesn't necessarily stop happening because we can, you know, find ourselves in a live event where we, you know, stub a toe or, uh, or we just feel very motivated and we overstretch ourselves and then we just pull the muscle. You know, we're not, it, it's, we're not invincible, but we are going to get so much stronger the more we lengthen, the more we focus on this flexibility. It's key. It's the key ingredient to adapting to jumping. So next on my list is we're going to go into, oh, first we'll just do a little lengthening where I like to open the arms out and just feel this stretch. Now that we have opened up the spine and the waist and the neck, we can feel this stretch here where I do have my hands off the bar and I'm pushing my palms down and then noticing that every single landing on this mat, on the cellar size, or every single landing has me going into a very deep stretch. So I feel that stress, that stretch happening in my, not only my wrists and my forearms, but my biceps, my triceps, and my deltoid. I feel it like a deep, deep stretch in my, in my full arms. So that's what we wanna do is we wanna lengthen and feel that deep stretch. And we could also be putting our wrists inward, feeling that nice pull and that pump into our lengthened forearms, lengthened wrists, and we can do wrist circles and wrist twists. And the sky's the limit with how we can open up and loosen up and lengthen the entire arms while we're in this down bounce, getting longer and longer and longer, strengthening the joints. So let's go ahead and get into the lower body strength, lengthening. So first I like to start with the quads. So this is a more of a, a, a faster pace than you would be used to as far as like, you know, stretching the quads. So we're gonna do only one mid bounce in between is where I'm at and where I think most of us can be at. We don't need to stop and hold the stretch. We are looking at this like a rep opportunity. The more reps, the better. We wanna lift those heels up and feel the lengthening of the quads. So we wanna also lift the spine up and notice that our posture gets really good when we are lengthening the quads. Lifting those heels up, feeling that stretch, active stretch, every single time we lift the heel. Now, there's positions we can get into. We can bring those D's inward slowing it down, noticing that we're paying attention to every part of the lift, every part of the stretch. Feeling, what is the new muscles that are, we're stretching if the knees are going in? Does this give us knee pain? Does this feel like it's stretching the knees? Because it is certainly strengthening the knees. Now we can also bring our knees outward. And we can also be doing this with many mid bounces in between. This is just wonderful. This I could do for hours and hours straight. <laughs> and I'm not going to, but if we can keep the heart rate low, then we can focus on the stretching rather than it being a cardio or a strength training workout. So this really does open up the, hip, uh, the, the quads, the knees, and we wanna feel it. If I wanna get it, even more flexible than the next guy, I got to be the one that's going to lift my heels higher and get feel that deeper stretch. The more flexible we get, the more we have to put in some effort to really get in there and get it even longer, get it even more stretched out. So now let's go ahead and do the hamstrings. I started with forward kicks for many years and I realized that we don't have to start with forward kicks straight forward. We can start with forward kicks crossing over. And I don't face my bar when I do that. I face to the side. And we can just do very gentle. And we're going to put three mid bounces in between. So this specifically is going to help to lengthen the side of the hamstring, the backs of the knees, and beginning to lengthen the glutes. 
So this is a great starting point for our around the world kicks or around the clock kicks. So that's a great starting point. And then we can start right at noon. We can do two mid bounces in between. Starting right at noon. Let's pretend that we are just lengthening into the clock of life. Now let's go ahead and do 11 and one. For some of you that have a wider bar, you just have to figure out how to kick around the bar or face away from the bar. But we want to go to 11 and 1. And then we want to go to 2 and 10. And when we do our inner thigh lengthening here, I like to stand upright. Because this helps me feel that stretch in the inner thighs. And leaning into it just a little bit, pointing the toes. There's really no wrong way to do it because the goal is just for us to get more flexible and to practice. If this is the first time you've done it, you might have questions. Once you've done it three, four, five times, you'll say, I feel a difference. This is definitely feeling better and it's feeling more efficient. And we can do side to side kicks like this. So I don't necessarily point my toes when I do side to side kicks. I will keep my feet um, parallel to the ground, but I absolutely could point my toes at the top, kind of point my quads upwards. All that matters is that I'm feeling different, mood, different muscles, different points in my hips getting stronger and lengthening, strengthening. So around the world kicks, is an excellent way to lengthen the legs, to recover the legs, to get the hips so much stronger. And we can just go around the clock with one bounce, with one kick in every, you know, we could just do one kick here, one kick here, one kick here, one kick, you know, or we could do 30 kicks forward, 30 kicks to one and 11. 30 kicks here, 30, 30, 30. We can just go as fast or as slow as we want to. We could also um, kick faster, you know? We can kind of make it a, a higher intensity. Anything is, you know, is the answer. <laughs> Anything works. So we've gone to the side to side kicks. Now we can go diagonally back, which is great for the glutes. It's great for the hips. If we put a little flex in the foot, that's gonna help us kind of feel a little bit of a tension or a, a flex in the, in the hips and the glutes. And we are absolutely accessing a deeper flexibility in that area. We also want to keep the chest up as we are kicking any, anywhere behind us. So we can go all the way around and then eventually as we kick straight behind us, we want to again keep the chest up. Notice that this can be a great core engagement or core activation exercise. This can be a glute activation. We can begin to feel the opportunity of flexing our glutes in back kicks. We can also be kicking into a more flexible lower back and connect to strengthening the entire lower back. We could even do a little bit of a crossover with our back kicks just to seal the deal with that around the clock and with that lengthening, strengthening opportunity in the lower back and in, the, in those hips. Okay, so next up we have the arms. We didn't really hit the arms before like we're going to hit them now and the waist is going to be involved incorporating the arms. So I love swimming on a rebounder. It's one of my favorite ways to lengthen and slim down the waist because when we stretch and we get you know, longer, we ultimately are just creating um, more opportunity for circulation in this area, which can help to mobilize fat. It's great for strengthening the lower back so much and we want to incorporate arm lengthening while we're doing the swimming because yes, swimming can be targeted for back strengthening and for waist lengthening, but we can also take the extra 
um, the extra connection, mine to lengthening connection in the arms and get those longer arms that we all desire, those longer muscles that we all desire. The longer the muscles, the more potential for muscle density and muscle mass production. So starting with crawl stroke, it's a beautiful thing. There's gonna be leaning over to the side and we can lengthen the arm here. And notice that this side of the body gets a little bit longer. And then we hold the bar, and I could never ever do this without the bar. We lean back and we reach around. And you know, we might just start with very gentle strokes that it's not too much more than a beautiful crawl stroke. We're noticing that we do kind of focus on a longer arm here. We focus on a longer arm and an open chest reaching back. We focus on a longer waist and a longer arm here. And then we focus on a longer upper back and a longer arm here. There's a lot of um, variations to this. We could put a flex in the arm and firm up the arm and almost create the experience of pushing through resistance like we were swimming. We could do a pretty vigorous swim while we're pumping and flushing, or we could focus on maybe more of a relaxed lengthened arm and we can go really deep into the stretching and reach over. And this is gonna be very, very intense if we're just starting out. So we want to pay close attention to our back strength and we don't wanna to go too far into our stretches. We wanna just go gently into the stretches and know that the down bounce is bringing us a little bit deeper into the stretch. So crawl stroke, it's a classic stroke that we could practice, we can enjoy, and we can notice that there's many varieties of the crawl stroke that we can do. Then we can also do back stroke. And it's just beautiful. You always want to go all the way around if you can. I kind of stop here and then I start here. And I lift and I notice that my weight shifts into the feet as I go according to what I need in order to reach forward, reach up, reach back and reach down. Reach forward, reach up, reach back and the weight shifts. And that's, you know, it just happens naturally. And then the side stroke is so beautiful. We can just do one at a time, keeping the hand on the bar, big, deep stretches. And right here is an opportunity to lengthen. So I'm showing you all this because when you go do my stretching routines, you remember this and you can, and you can practice this and really make it your goal to use every single bounce, use every single opportunity to get that deeper stretch and to potentially slow it down and get your lengthening potential. So with the side strokes, I like to open the chest here. I like to lengthen the waist here. And then I like to reach over and I like to, like to lengthen the back. And so bringing it up, up and over. Noticing that most of the weight is in that standing leg because that's just happening naturally. And then I can do the other side. So side strokes. Really beautiful open chest here, lifting up in the waist, reaching over, making sure that the chest, the waist, and the back are getting all that beautiful potential for stretching. And then we can do, I like to call it uh, treading water, and I, I, I like to do one arm at a time. So we can reach forward, stretching out the back, and then we can reach. So I like to bend my, my wrists. Maybe the wrists are forward when I come forward, and then the wrist is facing outward when I come around this way. So I just do big treading water swim strokes here, holding the bar, kind of work my way into a twist in the waist, opening up the back and the chest, two major components of our opportunity here in swimming is that we're not only lengthening the arms, and lengthening the waist, we're lengthening the upper body and the chest, keeping ourselves nice and flexible and tight and small and strong and dense all at the same time. So we are working the wrists and absolutely getting stronger wrists with this beautiful motion and we're pumping as we go. I like to give myself a little emphasis on this back here 
where I go open and I just really want to lengthen that chest a little bit more in that stretch. And then we can do it on both sides, open and open. And no, you, sometimes you might notice the balance kind of dies out and you're like, oh, you're just kind of, you know, and then you're like, oh yeah, I am standing on a rebound. I might as well bounce. And then you might notice that you could be bouncing even higher if you wanted to. Really get in that nice, like, high pump, you know, just the pump up of the heels, getting that nice deeper flush, building a little bit more density. And like I said, with the, the firm strokes, you could put a firm, strong, you could do one arm at a time, put a firm um, flex in your arm, and you can do beautiful crawl strokes and watch that heart rate. It's gonna come up. Those muscles are gonna feel strong. You're gonna work the entire body. Just wait till you feel your mu muscles in your arms tomorrow when you wake up or later in the day. A 10 minute swim segment is just what I love. It's the perfect amount, whether it's a stretch session or a strengthening stretch session. 10 minutes is the sweet spot, but you know, five minutes is good. 30 minutes, whatever you want, you know, it's just all good. And so this is another great one and we're gonna, we're almost finished here. So standing nice and tall, toes facing forward. We wanna put our feet into a strict hip width stance for this one. So we like to do this spine stretch in the live workouts where we keep those toes forward and we hold the bar. Usually goes to that side of the bar that we're facing or beginning to twist and we lift the spine, kind of like we're doing a seated twist pose in yoga. And we want to lift the spine up and twist the body and open the chest. And we want to pull that back shoulder back and really try to get that spine into a gentle position of a stretch. And then in that gentle lifted position, we notice that we are in an up and down balance and we're opening up the spine and we're creating more flexibility in the spine. And you'll see just how, how powerful this is by staying here for like 15, 30, 45 seconds to a minute. And then when you get out of it, get out of it slowly. It's very, very powerful and intense for the spine. And we just want to get into that nice standing twist, keeping our toes forward and holding on the bar, lifting our spine up as much as possible. So next up, uh, bottoms up is an amazing one that we could spend time doing and I could actually have a chair. So I do have a chair here. So I'll show you what it looks like to have a chair. We can use the bar. So I'll show you first. We can use the bar. This is bottoms up. We got the name because the bottom goes up. So we can hold the bar anywhere we want to anywhere we want to, all the way down to the edge of the rebounder. And this is an incredible, not just lengthening, but strengthening move for the backs of the legs. But eventually it gets to a point where it's not doing a whole lot of strengthening because we're focusing more on lengthening once those hamstrings adapt. So we are in this beautiful bottoms up position and we want to specifically stretch the booty upward and really create that length in the glutes and in the hamstrings. And then we incorporate that gentle bounce. Now here is, this is just a beautiful, beautiful position to be in. And the chair is an opportunity for us to get into that same position, but not having to bend over nearly as much. And I could turn the chair around and I could have this chair up here. And this is just creating, you know, a different, a different bar position, a different support system, so we can continue lifting the booty and getting in that deep stretch. So what's really great about bottoms up is that there are a variety of leg positions that we can be in, and I just wanna share that with you so you're aware. We could have our toes out, just like that, as we're gently pumping into the stretch, and there's no wrong way to do this unless we don't feel the stretch. And the only way to feel the stretch is for us to have the ability to lift, lift the legs, lengthen, stretch out the legs. We don't necessarily, we will not lock the knees, but we want to lift, do most of the lifting coming from the top or the bottom of the spine, like lifting upward. So we want to get those legs into a stretch position. And that could be just by bending forward more, we get that lengthening. So we can put our toes outward like this. We can put our toes inward. 
we could put our toes, our feet farther apart. We could even put our feet all the way together and we could have our feet staggered. We could have our feet apart staggered. There's just no wrong way to do it. We want to get into the, the deepest part of our hamstring and glutes in order to really lengthen and strengthen those areas. We can also put our feet in a wide stance and bending one knee, lean into an inner thigh stretch and bounce into that. And you feel it. It's all in the feelings. It's all happening through the feelings of, of the stretch. That is what we're doing and we're accomplishing on the rebounder. So next up, we are gonna do the relaxation bounce. So this is just really a massage. We're laying on the massage chair. Our head is in that hole and there's a beautiful, beautiful view, whatever that view is. And you know, the, the sounds in our ears are just making us so happy and peaceful. I like to put this image in our head because what we want to do, holding the bar and doing this relaxation bounce, is we wanna feel as good as if we were laying on a massage table and we were getting those good feelings. Somebody is rubbing our bodies and they're doing the perfect job. This is doing the perfect job at massaging ourselves and we can connect to that feeling right away. We feel more of the up bounce in the relaxation bounce and it's no different than health bounce and it can be all variations of health bounce. We wanna feel that up bounce and we wanna lift and notice that weightlessness, that lightness. That's what we connect to when we're on that massage table. We feel weightless, we feel light. We feel like there's an incredible relaxation and peace coming over our bodies and we can connect to that. It's a different experience than, you know, beginning to focus on training and circulation and warming up the body. This is more for relaxation, cooling down. This could be a great bounce to do before bed, watching TV when you're stressed any time of day is a good time of day to do it so lifting the spine we don't need to work us work so much on our posture necessarily but we do want to relax the body as much as we can while our heels are either coming off the mat or not it's fine it doesn't matter so full relaxation bounce and then i want to give you one more tip there are a couple things we can do to to strengthen the eyes the tongue the face, the cheeks. We could, you know, any exercise that you can find online that strengthens anything on the body, we can apply it to the rebounder. It could be to lift the, the eyelids. It could be to strengthen the cheeks or tighten the skin. If there's ever any yoga exercises or facial, you know, uh, uh, positions to get into, do them while we're bouncing. It is bringing more circulation. It's automatically going to work better. One thing I like to do is strengthen the, the tongue and the jaw by doing tongue circles into, so I just drag my tongue into my cheeks through the top half of my mouth into the other cheek through the bottom half of my gums. And I do circles. I do five in each side and that's a f five in each direction. And that's a great way to strengthen the tongue and relax the muscles and to strengthen the face. And then last but not least, I like to focus on eye strengthening exercises where we will put our finger about 12 inches away from our eyes. This is very effective. We can do figure eights with our fingers. So we can take our eyes or we can look straight at the fingerprint of our finger or the fingernail or whatever we look at. And we can do these figure eights, keeping our face forward. We can give our eyes a, a lengthening and a fatigue, a, just a gentle fatigue, but a lengthening by bringing our finger to the outer perimeter of our vision where it's comfortable, but challenging, just a little bit challenging, a little bit comfortable. And we can do figure eights. So we can go up to the full circle of our eyesight and we can go into both directions and we will notice that there is a little bit of a feeling of fatigue that begins to happen in that. And when we're doing our pumping and flushing and we do it for maybe a minute or so or 30 seconds, we do that, you know, once a day or a few times a week. It's incredible for the eyes and we have yet to see, you know, personally or um, the testimonial testimonies haven't been you know flying at us but it is strengthening for the eyes and so we are knowing that and we are feeling it and believing in it and that's what this is also it's an experience of believing it's an experience of feeling and connecting and exploring our greatest strength and potential while using a rebounder so 
thank you so much for joining me for this live stream or for viewing this video on our YouTube channel. Again, I have the full length, one hour, all levels stretching routine listed in the description below. And we also have a beginner 30 minute version that's also in the description after this live stream, okay? Thanks again, you guys, and please leave any questions and comments you have below. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.